So today's topic is locus diagram. Uh, in our previous discussion, what we have observed that it is totally meaningless to draw a feather diagram or or better to say in a simple sentence hazard diagram drawing is not possible with signals with variable frequency or signals with variable frequency the diagram is not possible for signals with variable frequency and it is also not possible for the systems with variable parameter. So these two points are very clear to us. Now this gives us an indication that okay. So if the, let us consider these two points, we have already discussed these two points. Let us move to the basic idea of local step. See. Let us have a um, RL circuit. Here, your voltage is Vm sin omega t. Now, what is the inductive reactance offered by this L? We all know magnitude of that inductive reactance is omega L and uh, more precisely it is J omega L. Now if we have a system or better to say with variable L or variable omega or both, then what will happen? Omega L will also vary. So, if you uh, either if you vary L from 0 to infinity or omega from 0 to infinity, and both 
the case your omega n will also vary from 0 to infinity, right? Now what is the problem? Here, see, the problem is, uh, we are cleaning the area also takes a hell of time. Here, if you see the current value is I, then you can write I is equal to what? Vm by root over R square plus omega square L square and the case of this will be sin omega t minus tan inverse omega l by r right now if we have a situation like if we have a situation that just if we have a situation where omega l is fan then what will happen at the onset let us start with point terminal value of omega l that is omega l is equal to c now if you make omega l is equal to zero that indicate you are replacing this whole omega l by means of a short circuit like this is not here here this one is totally short circuited and your it is behaving like a simple resistive circuit now if you have to draw the phasor diagram in that case your for omega l is equal to zero your expression of i will be exactly Vm by R sin omega t. We should also note that if we try to draw the phasor diagram then for this value of Vm sorry this value of omega L we will have this is our V let me use some different color for current. This will be our, I think it is not clearly visible. Let us use a different color combination. Like, this is our phasor uh, for P, and for this value of I we are having this is our i that is vm by r sin omega t now see uh, it is uh, the this value is the maximum value of current if we consider that, let me uh, also mention that R is constant. If R is constant, then this one, this, uh, this current, as we are getting it for omega L is equal to 0, we can also write its IR, totally resistive current. That is the maximum value of I that can flow through this circuit. So we can write here that IR is equal to maximum value of I. 
Now, uh, what will happen if we make omega L is equal to some other value? Omega L can assume any value. So, instead of 0, if we change it to omega L is equal to R. It is not uh, difficult. R can have any finite value, say R is equal to 5 ohm. And you, uh, for certain combination of your frequency and inductance, it may happen that your inductance, uh, inductor is a variable inductor and that is why the inductance of that inductor is variable. Or you may have frequency of your supply is variable, uh, it is a variable frequency supply but your L is constant. Whatever be the case, you can always have your omega L is equal to 5 ohm. Now, if that is the case, then for uh, that value of uh, your omega L, that is R, you will have what? You will have here. And this expression will also become sin omega t minus 45 degree. So, and also it is interesting to note that this uh, omega, suppose let us consider uh, L is constant, omega is fat. So, let me write L is constant like R. But who is very bad? Omega is a variable number or a variable frequency. So if omega is a variable frequency, then this omega, if we value this omega, then you must note that uh, this variation, one uh, more thing we should note here that our all our signals are continuous. So what is the essence of this statement continuous that what I am trying to say What I am trying to say here is very simple that your circuit value, whatever be the value of your circuit if you assume, if uh, you can't get it uh, in a discrete manner, that change of omega L change of omega L from 0 to R will also be in a continuous manner from R to say if you want to take R to let us take it uh, R to uh, root 3 R that change will also take in a continuous manner and also uh, this value of omega L will become infinite in a continuous manner. So this omega L it will change in a continuous manner and do remember that R is constant. R is not varying but what is happening here the value of omega L that is varying from gradually from 0 to say very small lump means it is continuously increasing there is no jump increase in omega L it is continuously increasing but uh, in our present case what we just discussed that for a certain value of omega L when uh, say omega L is continuously increasing if we want to have a graphical representation we will have omega L like this here it is omega 
and here it is omega l omega l is continuously increasing now if uh, that is the case then what will happen this omega l is continuously varying and for certain value of omega suppose somewhere here omega l will have a value omega l is equal to r now if we take that particular value if we among those uh, infinite number of values of omega l if we pick that omega l is equal to r what will be the value of current the value of current will become vm by root 2r and this one will become sin omega t minus 45 t so previously your current was current phasor was proportional to the length of vm by r and as we know that phasor length is rms length so uh, more precisely its length was proportional to vm by root 2 r but right now what it will uh, what type of change you will observe it will become vm by root 2 r by root 2 that is when the rms value will become vm by 2 r and what about the phase angle instead of uh, uh, its previous orientation that is totally aligned with v now it will become like this uh, let me use uh, different color to make you understand So, if you uh, proceed, this value of IR is uh, representing Vm by root 2 R sin omega t minus 45 t. Now you can take another value, omega L is equal to root 3 R, then what will happen here? you will get for omega l is equal to root 3 r you will have what you will have here you will have 2 r and here you will have minus 60 degree now see that your Let me let me draw some uh, line. Uh, just give me a minute. So here, This is uh, not 45 degree, somewhat less than 45 degree, but uh, try to understand. Uh, okay, let me let me redraw it once again. This is very difficult to draw angle in this phasor uh, time. Now it is somewhat okay. IR is equal to 45 degree. But here, see the magnitude of IR that is Vm by root 2 R and this angle is 45 degree. Now, uh, what will happen when you take uh, this second value that is omega L is equal to root 3 R? This one will become
this one will become IR is equal to VM by 2R sin omega t minus 60 degree. So, uh, this angle is 60 degree. Now see the problem, uh, not problem, the, rather the beauty of this whole thing. This what's your omega L? If we take the another terminal value of omega L that is infinity here, then what will happen? Your this denominator part will become infinite and I will become something. That is Vm by say D, where D is D tends to infinity because D is equal to D is equal to root under R square plus omega L square and your as your omega L tends to infinity. So this D tends to infinity will make that whole thing this one tends to zero. So, the magnitude of this i for omega l is equal to infinity is 0 or very close to 0, almost 0. But what about this phase? This will become, see, tan inverse omega l for terminal value, this is infinity. So, this tan inverse infinite, it will give you minus 90 degree. That means for terminal value, you will have a phase very small. Means here the orientation, if uh, the phase is means if we uh, can somehow means try to figure out the orientation of the phase. Let me show you it by dotted line. This is 90 degree with your reference line, but the magnitude of the phase is anything is small. So, now uh, another thing we must not forget that uh, although I have shown two or three discrete value or rather I have taken a few discrete value of omega L for my purpose, but omega L variation is continuous. As you can see here, in this car that with omega we have assumed that l is also constant r is constant l is constant only omega is a variable frequency and omega with variation of omega we are having a continuous increase of omega l so if for each value of omega although they are infinite in number if we uh, keep on plotting the phase then we will have infinite number of phasor here, one phasor tip will be here, another phasor tip will be here, here, here. We will have so many phasors. Now, one thing is common in all those phasors, they are following a definite rule. What is that rule? They are following uh, let me clear the space, no space. It becomes fading. Okay, so now we are all set for our, uh, let us quickly revise what was there. Yeah. We had Vm sin omega t, a sinusoidal voltage source with variable frequency omega. And we have RL series circuit, both R and L are constant. Now, uh, the current, instantaneous value of current, in previous uh, case, it may so happen that I have mistakenly uh, made uh, or mentioned I in capital letter. Uh, don't do that. Do remember that instantaneous value of any alternating quantity or any quantity is always being represented by small letter, not capital. Huh. So, uh, do remember this and uh, this 
uh, instantaneous value of i is vm sin omega t uh, minus tan inverse omega l by r uh, root under r square plus omega l square. Uh, please correct yourself in the previous um, uh, during previous discussion it may so happen that I mistakenly write I in capital letter. Uh, please uh, correct yourself. Now here uh, this curve is also interesting. This one is representing the uh, change of Yes, this one is very interesting. Here omega is variable, omega is from 0 to infinity and this one is omega L. Now, in the previous example, what I did, or means during my previous discussion, what I was doing, that I picked up two discrete point from this one from this line. Although this one is continuously increasing, but I picked up two discrete point. One where our value of omega L was R and for that we got this phasor diagram that gives us a angle of 45 degree. For this, for this value it was uh, a phasor with uh, that one was Vm by you know, 2R and for this one another value we have picked up where Omega L was root 3 R. So we picked up that value and for that we got this particular phase. But what is interesting to note that this variation of omega L with increasing variation of omega or with increasing value of omega is continuous in nature. It is not discrete. So if it is continuous in nature, then uh, what we can expect that for each and every value of omega, we will have infinite number of such phasor with different magnitude and different orientation. So for different value of omega, for um, uh, let me write for different value of frequency we will have different magnitude of the current phasor different magnitude and phase angle of the current phasor so if this is true, if this is true, then uh, for each uh, value of omega will have different phasor and if we, uh, uh, what is the common in those phasor? The common thing is that
with increasing value of omega or frequency the magnitude of the current phasor is decreasing or magnitude of the current phasor is inversely proportional with omega and not inversely proportional like proportional we cannot say because uh, how it is varying we do not know but it is inversely varying with omega and uh, the phase angle in, uh, and the lagging phase angle is continuously increasing with omega so the whole thing is very clear here uh, magnitude is continuously decreasing magnitude is continuously decreasing and the phase angle is continuously increasing right so we have uh, noticed that magnitude is continuously decreasing and lagging angle is continuously increasing so if that is the case then what we can have we can if we uh, for each value of omega we will get the different tip of the phasor and if we join all of them for continuous variation of omega we will get something like this. So this is called the current locus of our circuit. Uh, let me draw it clearly so that you can understand. We have reference phasor V then we have current I R because this is for omega L is equal to 0 and also that is the maximum value of the current then what we observe we observe some change in the magnitude of uh, here it is Vm by root 2 r this one we got for omega L is equal to R then we take another value here it is Vm by 
आर साइन ओमेगा टी माइनस सिक्सटी डिग्री सो व्हाट वाज माय पॉइंट दैट फॉर इच हेलो ऑफ ओमेगा एल ई आर ओमेगा एल इज इक्वल टू रूट थ्री आर फॉर इच हेलो ऑफ ओमेगा एल व्हाट यू विल हैव यू विल हैव योर टी पॉप करेंट फेज़र heading in this way and for maximum value of omega that is omega is equal to infinity you will have your current phasor magnitude is equal to zero and your angle of that current phasor is equal to 90 degree so if we join them let me draw it If we join them, we should have in case of topics. Uh, if we draw it in scale, generally during class I can uh, show you using compass, but here it is difficult for me to use compass. so yes so in this make some what uh, hmm. this is our ir This is one value of I R, not I R I. This is one value of I, where omega n was uh, R, and this is another value of omega n where it was root three R. This one is forty five degree. This one was sixty degree. So this white line. Or gray line, better to say gray line. This gray line it gives us the locus. This gray line gives us the locus. Locus of the current phasor. Increasing value of omega. We increasing value of omega. Uh, so, in a nutshell, what we can say that is. Uh, Total thing. This. Uh, let me quickly. Uh, let us quickly revise what I just discussed. That R L circuit, R constant, L constant, omega is a variable frequency, and for omega L, uh, for increasing value of omega, we are getting this locus. And if we want, we can also assign a direction. This direction is for increasing value of omega. here your omega is equal to zero and here your omega is equal to infinite so this is the locus of uh, the rl circuit and uh, in case what we can write that
Nah, for for parallel circuit RL circuit having constant R and L but this one is variable frequency that means omega is varying from 0 to infinity in a continuous manner then we will have instead of phasor diagram is not possible but for all the individual value of frequency for all the individual value of frequency if we plot the corresponding phasor then that if this is our voltage axis that the all the tip of those phasor will form a complete semicircle in our V I play, right? They will form a complete semicircle in V I play, and for a particular value of omega, without any hesitation, we can claim that magnitude of current or current phasor will always uh, means the tip of the current phasor will always on this uh, curve. So. Like if I take a particular value of omega for which uh, our tan inverse omega n by r is equal to 30 degree for a particular value of omega uh, with a small calculation uh, like in that case omega n has to be how much is it should be 1 by 3 r. For this value of omega, what you will get? You will get a current curve. Yes. But this diagram, this extra portion should not be there. The tip of the current should always follow this semicircle. Another interesting thing to note that if we take this four quadrant of Vi here for RL circuit with variable uh, uh, variable uh, what uh, variable frequency supply our this semicircular arc of the semicircular locus is in which quadrant is in uh, oh sorry. Uh, actually uh, this one is uh, not correct like uh, this is not too many we can't say it like this this will be uh, misleading but what I am trying to say that at least we can say that the locus this semicircular arc this will always represent a lagging current this semicircular arc always represent a lagging current a current of lagging current now let us consider another circuit that is a RC circuit and uh, the circuit is uh, fed by an 
identical source with Vm sin omega t where omega is continuously varying from 0 to infinity. and r and c are constant. Then when your omega is equal to infinity, what is the effective capacitive reactance offered by c that is 1 upon j omega c. So at any instance what we can get we will get we will get the effective capacitive reactance is one by omega c and the magnitude of current here I is Vm by root under R square plus 1 upon omega c whole square and then R square plus 1 by omega c whole square. Mm, then you are having here your phase angle is tan in fox. What is the phase angle? Sorry. It should be sin omega t minus tan inverse previously it was omega l by r and now it should be tan inverse plus 1 upon omega c r right now if this is the case then Sorry for the interruption, I thought I could continue with the RL circuit and you could compare both of them side by side, but it was again space crisis. Let us write the expression of current, I if you can recall, it should be I is equal to Vm by root under R square plus 1 by omega c whole square then it should be sin omega t minus uh, actually this minus will become plus tan inverse 1 by omega c r and again in the previous case omega is a variable frequency and it is varying from 0 to infinity in a continuous manner and just like the other series circuit diagram here also we will try to obtain the locus but before we start think about the physical situation when you make omega is equal to 0 radian per second then it indicates your supply is a DC supply and what happens when we put a capacitor in a DC supply as we know that all these uh, diagram, they are for this local diagram also like phasor diagram which is only applicable to steady state condition. We can draw or try to obtain locus diagram for transient. Here I would like to make this point. Locus diagram as it only uh, shows or reveals the possible uh, 
location for the tip of the feathers that we can obtain at different operating frequency frequencies like phasor diagram this locus diagram is only valid for steady state operation. It is not valid for transient operation. So, locus diagram also in order to obtain this locus, you have to vary your frequency or vary your parameter, but whatever you vary, make sure that you consider the locus or you have to wait till your system reach steady state and then only you will get this locus fine now uh, what i was trying to say by showing all this to you is that uh, yes it was that this expression now now uh, you are talking about uh, the physical uh, situation when omega is equal to 0 radian per second it indicates your supply is pure this and we know that in steady state if this is supply capacitor behaves like what capacitor behaves like an open circuit as if there is no capacitor it is open so in case it is open then what value of current do you expect here that is very obvious you will get uh, zero value of current magnitude wise it will become zero omega is equal to zero this whole thing will become zero current will also become zero. But what about the phase? This one, this can inverse omega c by r. If you make omega is equal to zero, then this will give you tan inverse infinite. Although 1 by 0 is, mathematically speaking, it is undefined or not a number. But uh, we engineer, we often uh, use this kind of uh, small approximation or things. So we consider that as omega is very close to zero or omega tends to zero, then this tends to infinity. And we know that tan inverse is 90. So it is very interesting to note that your hold, um, current magnitude of the current is 0 and the phase of the current is 90. So if we uh, try to plot that, then if this is your V, then your current, current will be here, only a small value of current. Right. Now, if we, uh, like previous example, if we take different value of omega, then what will happen? If we gradually increase omega, as this omega is here appearing in our denominator, so this term with increasing value of omega, the capacitive reactance will decrease. And due to the reduction of capacitive reactance, what will happen? The current that is flowing through this circuit will also increase. Current flowing through this circuit will increase. 
along with the reduction of the capacitance value. But capacitance value, sorry, capacitance value is constant, but capacitive reactance is reducing due to increasing value of omega. So, what you can expect, your current will uh, increase. But what about uh, the phase of the current? If you make this tan inverse 1 by omega c, if you uh, gradually increase the value of omega, the amount of phase shift offered by this portion will become gradually less than 90 degree. Like once you make omega c for some value, omega c is equal to uh, say omega c when your value of omega c is 1 by root 3 r magnitude calculation uh, you have to uh, do by yourself it will give you how much like same thing you will see here you will get omega c is equal to 1 by root 3 r of that value of omega c what will be your current value this will become root 3 r so the whole thing will become 2R, Vm by 2R and what about the phase, this will become uh, 60 degree, this will uh, for omega c is equal to 1, there is some problem, upon root 3R you will get uh, this will give you 60 degree so if we have to draw the phasor the phasor will be like this The magnitude of this phasor, this angle is how much? This angle is 60 degree. And magnitude of this phasor is how much? This is Vm by 2R. Or, and if you consider the RMS value, then you have to include one more root to term here. This. Now, if you, if you want that if you are increasing the frequency and then what will happen you make it 1 by r so when you make it 1 by r then your this one will become 45 degree and current magnitude will become vm by root 2 r like you will get This is Vm by proportional to Vm by root 2R and if you want to consider RMS value then you have to include another root to here. And what is this angle? This is 45 degree. Now you make omega c is equal to root 3 by R. Then what you will observe? You will observe that this will give you A phasor like this, what will be the magnitude of that phasor? Uh, 
it should be like uh, if I have got wrong uh, then you should get it like root 3 pm and again if you want to consider RMS you have to consider this root 2 so here this angle is how much this angle is 30 degree so basically what we are observing and when we will make this one this omega infinite this c will behave like a short circuit for omega is equal to infinite this 1 by omega c will give you 0 and omega is equal to infinite and this will behave like a short circuit so your current will become resistive and it will lie in phase with your voltage so basically what we are getting we are getting a semicircular arc although i am drawing a horrible semicircular arc but i am helpless because here on this pen tablet nothing works <laughs> I am not a professional artist. Obviously, this is not an excuse, but yes, uh, this is uh, nothing works on this pen tablet. Anyway, so you can understand this. And what is the direction? Interestingly, here the direction is like this. Sorry. So here your omega is equal to 0 and here your omega is equal to infinite. Now uh, see the beauty that this also gives us a semicircle but uh, what we are observing here that this omega is equal to infinite like uh, for our RL if you can recall let me yes if you can recall for RL if this was our P RL locus was like this RL locus is like this where here it was omega is equal to 0 and here it was omega is equal to infinite and here we are having exactly uh, um, kind of mirror image but not the exact mirror image so you keep this in your mind and in my next video, I will show you the locus diagram for parallel circuit. Obviously, before going to parallel circuit, we will uh, discuss series resonance. And then I will show you the locus diagram of uh, parallel circuit. And you will see that you will get exact this type of thing for parallel RL circuit when we will consider current as our reference and voltage will be heading. So, and from that we will uh, try to reach the theory of duality, dual circuit, concept of dual circuit.